Hey everybody, let's go ahead and start lesson one. This is unit four, everybody. We're in unit four, lesson one. So ratios, proportions, percents is what this unit is all about. The first one is about a rectangle and it has a height to width ratio of three to four and a half. Give two examples of dimensions for rectangles that could be scale versions of this rectangle. So the first thing that comes to mind is if you just take those numbers and just multiply by two, right? If you just multiply by two, you end up with, well, three times two is six, and four and a half times two, four and a half doubled, is nine. All right? And then I could, you know, I mean, I could, I guess, I could just multiply those by three or multiply those by four or whatever, but what I notice right here, six, six to nine, that could be simplified, you know? You could simplify that down much like a fraction. So six to nine can be both, those can both be divided by three. So six divided by three is, <clears throat> is two, and nine divided by three is three. So there you go. So rectangles with these dimensions would be fine, six to nine or two to three. And there's a endless number of answers you could possibly have. Please pardon me, I have a cold and I'm like, my nose is at the ready. All right, so sorry about that. Number two, number two. One rectangle measures two by seven, two units by seven units. A rectangle, or the other rectangle, measures 11 units by 37. Are these two figures scale versions of each other? If so, find the scale factor. If not, briefly explain why. Well, <clears throat> well, we could easily just do this if we compare, like if, let's say I write them out in fraction form. So two to seven, and I want to compare that to <clears throat> 11 to 37. 11 to 37. So in order for me to get 11 out of two, out of two, we, we could we would just have to do five and a half, like 5.5, 5.5. And now seven times 5.5, seven times 4.5 does not equal 37. So right there. <clears throat> so these are not scaled versions. All right. Number three, ants have six legs. Uh, Elena and Andre write equations showing the proportional relation between the number of ants, A, to the number of legs, L. Elena writes that A equals six times L, and Andre writes that L equals uh, one six times A is equal to the number of legs. Do you agree with either of their equations? Explain your reasoning. Well, <clears throat> instead of just looking at them and go, well, I guess it's this one, or whatever, let's actually put some numbers in there, you know? Like, so A is the number of ants, L is the number of legs, okay? So we know that a, a, an ant has six legs, right? We know that an ant has six legs. So um, let's say we take this first equation they give us, A equals a equals six times, I always make my L's <clears throat> when it's algebraic, a little bit more scripted like that, like that, so six times L. And so let's say we have one ant, we know that one ant, I mean, this is not hard right here, one ant equals six legs, right? That's a given. One ant equals six legs. So if we were to put in six, you know, if we were to put in six, does that give us one for A? Then it's pretty obvious, it does not work. You know, you can see six times six equals 36. All right, so that doesn't make sense. Six legs does not equal the amount of 36 ants, okay? So we could say Aleda's equation doesn't quite work, okay? Good guess, but not quite there. So it's got to be Andre's, right? So let's not even work on it. Let's not even look at it. It's Andre's. Well, no, let's, let's make sure we check. So let's check this out. So Andre says that the number of legs is equal to one six 
times the number of ants. <clears throat> All right, now we can do the same thing over here. All right, now I can just take one and put it in that equation. And if we put one, we should get out six legs. That should come out six legs. So if we do that, let's, it's a really easy thing to do to check. One six times one. All right, one six times one equals one six. Well, that doesn't work at all. All right, so they're both wrong. <clears throat> Moving on to the next one here. On the grid, draw a scaled copy of quadrilateral A, B, C, D with a factor of two-thirds, two to three. All right, so it would be kind of difficult, not impossible, it would be kind of difficult, though, to use these because those are diagonals. So what I'm going to do to look for the scale factor <coughs> is I'm going to look at these right here. The the horizontal, you know, like if we look at the width of it horizontally, and we look at the vertical height of it right there. And I notice that both of those, right, when I count those, one, two, three, four, five, six, I get six both ways. All right? So if we're doing a scale factor of two thirds, two to three, all right, that means it's getting smaller, right? Because that's a that scale factor is less than one. That's less than one. So we're going to do, so I'm going to do, uh, two-thirds times six. So two-thirds times six equals twelve-thirds, which is four. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make, I know it kind of looks like a kite now, but now what we want to do is we want to make those equal, these, this line, this line, we want to make that equal to four. Okay, but it, it's not as easy as just, just drawing a line that's four and another one that's four. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to draw at least the, I'm going to do the, the new A and the new, that's called A prime. And then one, two, three, four. So that's going to be smaller. There's C prime right there. That's going to be our scaled copy. All right, that's four across right there. That's four across. Now the other thing too is that, uh, here's the, the other thing that I noticed with this is that these lines, let me just draw that thinner, but these lines, like this line right here, these, like, you know, these diagonals right here, they meet, they meet at that spot right there, which is, you know, if you think about it, <coughs> they meet uh, two in, right? They meet right here, there's two right there. So if we do two thirds of two, not going to come out very pretty, but it's going to give us a good I, kind of eyeball estimate as to where we should put that. So two thirds of two is going to be equal four thirds. Four thirds, and four thirds equals one and one third. One and one third. So instead of going right there, which would be, you know, that would be what the original one was, we're going to go one and one third. So one and one third. Here's one, and then break this into thirds right there. Those are the thirds, so I'll do right there. I'm going to erase all this stuff because I don't want to have a mess. So there it is. Okay, and then this is also, right, the distance from here to here is also two. So I'm going to go up one and one third. So I'm going to go up, that's one, and then one third is going to be right around there. It's not perfect, but it should do. Should do. All right, and now I'm gonna draw this. I'm gonna draw it. We got right here and right here. There you go. And then uh, we need the we need this line. You know that I'm gonna draw down. I need that to match this one to scale though, like to two thirds. So I want to do uh, well. I want to make that four. I want to make that four. So all right. So right here. That would be one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna make a point right there. Notice I'm not putting it right on the line because this one was not right on the, the hash mark either. So there is our scaled copy 
of that shape. That's two thirds scale. And it's just like we said, it's, <coughs> it's smaller. All right, number five, solve each equation mentally. All right, so five has times what is one. All right, now if you can't do this mentally, which is understanding, I can totally understand why that can't, you know, that can't happen. But if you can't do that mentally, one thing you might realize is that when you multiply a number by its reciprocal, by, you know, when you flip it, two-fifths, uh, you end up getting one. You get a product of one every time. So, because if you think about it, if I do this off to the side here, five halves times two fifths. If I don't do any cross canceling, I get I get ten tenths. And then anything over itself is equal to one, right? One ones, which equals one. So as long as you multiply by the reciprocal, you're going to get one. You're going to get one. So like right here. Uh, what times seven thirds? Well, it's got to be three sevenths. So that's got to be three sevenths right there. And then right here, uh, one divided by eleven halves is going to equal the reciprocal. So that's going to be two elevenths. All right, number six. Lid has a scale model of a modern train. The model is created on a scale of 1 to 48. The height of the model train is 102 millimeters. What is the actual height? What's the actual height of the train in meters? Explain your reasoning. All right, so uh, since it has a scale of 1 to 48, uh, I'm going to multiply this number by 48. All right, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do 108, or 102, sorry. Do 102 times 48. And I got 48.96, okay. Let me write down what I just did there. So I did 102 times 48, and I get 4,896. Now it's, it's important for us to point out that that's millimeters, okay? That's millimeters. Now this problem is asking us to tell us like what the height of the train is in meters, okay? So that's in millimeters. Now, one meter, one meter equals 1,000 millimeters, okay? It equals 1,000 millimeters. In other words, we can divide that by 1,000 and we'll get how many meters it is. And that's a power of 10. That's a power of 10. So if it's a power of 10, we're just going to divide, you know, we're just going to move the decimal over three places. So you're going to move over three places. One, two, three. So we're dividing. If we divided by ten, it would go here. If we divided by hundred, it would move over two places. Right there, that's a hundred. Since we're divided by a thousand, it's going to move over three. One, two, three. So that's where it goes. Right there. I turned it into a square. Uh, but yeah, so it's four point eight nine six meters. And I'm not going to round it. I mean, I guess we could round it to 4.9, but I'm just going to leave it. It doesn't. It's not a decimal that keeps going. So the actual train is 4.896 meters. And before you think, like, well, that doesn't seem very tall. Remember, a meter is uh, a little bit longer than three feet. It's a little bit longer than three feet. So, yeah, this is definitely, you know, this is this is almost five meters. So it's almost you know, 15 feet, it's probably over 15 feet tall. And trains are tall, trains are big. All right, so for B, on the scale model, the distance between the wheels on the left and the wheels on the right is one and a quarter inches. The state of Wyoming has an old, has old railroad tracks that are four and a half feet apart. Can the modern train travel on those tracks? Explain, explain your, uh, your reasoning. Okay, so, uh, so I'm just going to do one and one fourth times the scale. So we're going to do one and one fourth times 48. Okay, one and one fourth times 48, which is going to be five fourths times 48. 
Now, don't flip anything, don't change anything to division or anything. This is just a straightforward multiplication problem. So uh, I like to do cross-canceling if, if it shows. <coughs> so this turns into a 1, and 48 divided by 4 uh, is 12. So you get 12 times 5 is 60. 12 times 5 is 60. <coughs> and then, uh, just so you know, that's 60 inches, what we just got there, 60 inches. And uh, that may seem, seem confusing to you, but uh, does 60 inches, does that equal 4.5 feet? Okay? And it doesn't. It doesn't because 4.5 feet, 4.5 feet, if we just multiply that by 12, you'll get how many inches that is. Now, well, four, 4 times 12 is 48 plus 6 is going to be 54. So that, e that equals 54 inches. So this will not fit on the tracks. So it's a big no.